The latest expansion for The Division 2 goes live in just under 24 hours and with it a huge host of changes and improvements. Everything from gear, weaponry, builds, gear sets, end game, and even yes, the Dark Zone have received partial to full revamps in order to try and propel The Division 2 back into the spotlight among the gaming community. So with this in mind, let's now take a look at the Warlords of New York and nine changes to expect once you log in and take the deep dive back into the familiar territory of New York. Welcome back, Shade Agents. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer back with another Division 2 breakdown, and after scouring over the known items that the Warlords of New York will unveil, I am ready to showcase nine changes you need to expect once your respective platform goes live. And this brings me to our first subject, which is the installation of infinite progression and character leveling. And this is a direct departure from our current system of reaching level 30 gear score 500 and then receiving field proficiency caches. With the installation of Title Update 8, which is being introduced in tandem with the Warlords expansion, we will receive a new Shade Leveling Progression system that will allow us to essentially overpower our agents by receiving Shade Points in place of the older system of Proficiency Caches. Shade Points can be invested in unique core abilities such as offensive, defensive, utility, and weapon handling characteristics, and each ability tree has a cap, so your agent can't become too powerful. Now, a fifth category of scavenging will continue to reward your progression with crafting materials and credits no matter how many times you level up within this system. As you progress through this shade leveling system, your level icon will morph and signify to other players how much progression you have achieved. The dev team has also hinted that there is another use for the shade points that they have not yet fully revealed. Within every division game is a core component of weaponry, and the Warlords of New York will deliver 10 new exotics spread across all gear types, along with a host of changes to non-exotic weaponry. First up are the newly introduced exotics, which include the Bullet King LMG and its talent of Bullet Hell, which allows you to never need to reload, and for every 100 hits on target, it will reload your teammates' weapons as well. How about a blinged out SMG named Lady Death, which builds stacks for sprinting and consumes them for shooting, with kills giving you a sprint buff. The Gunslinger Dodge City, which buffs the first shot of your pistol by 100% with a maximum stack of 10, leading to an insane 1000% potential damage buff for that single shot. And there is also another exotic AUG, A3 assault rifle named the Bighorn, with talents that have not yet been revealed. What has not been openly discussed, and this is entirely based on my research and a bit of educated guessing, is that all weaponry will be modified from our current system of one active talent, one handling talent, and one equipped or holster talent, and reduced to a two talent system, with a single active talent and a single holstered or equipped talent. This new system was unveiled with the title update 7 and the exotic chameleon assault rifle, so watch for these changes to weaponry once Warlords goes live. Within this weaponry expansion and revamp, expect multiple new exotic weapons all with random damage ranges, 19 new named weapons, and the widespread reduction and compression of weapon talents that will promote the hunt for better weaponry. The Warlords of New York will unveil a completely new storyline involving a Shade Agent's constant nemesis of Aaron Keener and the familiar backdrop of New York. Over the course of five main missions and eight side missions, an agent will need to track down and terminate all four of Keener's henchmen who have allied and taken command of four areas of New York and the corresponding factions that inhabit those areas. Over those 13 missions, the location of Keener will become clearer. And for those of you that have played Ghost Recon Wildlands, it's pretty much the same idea of side missions to reach the mini boss and unlock the region, all with the end goal of reaching El Sueño. Rewards for taking down the four side bosses include new skills, such as an electric trap that can electrify and shock enemies, therefore holding them in place, a decoy that acts as a hologram and can mislead targets as to your whereabouts, and the vaunted sticky bomb makes its return with both explosive and EMP variants. 
Agents should also expect reworked factions, much like were introduced with the cleaner version 2.0s that we encountered on Coney Island. So don't expect the same old Rioters, Rikers, and LMB. Once an agent reaches level 40, they will be eligible for the newly unveiled Seasons Calendar, with the first of these being included with the Warlords expansion, while future Seasons will need to be purchased. Seasons will include new high-value targets to track down, global events, leagues, even more weapons and gear to unlock and acquire, and include skill mods and cosmetics. Agents will have plenty to do as there are 100 levels in each season pass and a new target will be unveiled every three weeks during the current season. An additional premium season pass can be purchased for even more loot to chase, more resources, and more gear drops. But the base season seems to be adequate enough to keep agents occupied for some time to come. You will need to own the Warlords of New York expansion in order to participate in the season's progression and overall, there is a lot going on here and should provide agents with many hours of grind and progression. The much maligned Dark Zone, a player favorite in the original Division game, has been completely revamped with the removal of non-contaminated gear and the reintroduction of visible stats on loot drops. The entire Dark Zone concept has been tailored towards players seeking out conflict with rewards and bonuses centered around extraction points. The Occupied DZ has been removed, although there will still be an Invaded DZ and that we will fight the Black Tusk faction. Grey Rogue has been removed, and the time to toggle Rogue has been reduced to 300 milliseconds and can be performed while aiming down the sights. Dark Zone perks have been reworked away from non-PVP bonuses, and XP will now only be rewarded for actions involving other players, whether that be fighting them or assisting them. VoIP by default has been activated, with the option to opt out and mute, and ammo crates have been added at every extraction zone for quick restocks. And finally, teased by the devs on stream, new and powerful gear will be Dark Zone exclusive. And while there are no new zones with the expansion, all of these changes will take effect launch day for all three DC DZs. Skill tiers now replace skill power as the core attribute needed to unlock varied and more powerful versions of your skills. Agents will no longer need to run a prerequisite amount of skill power on their gear in order to unlock skill mods, and will instead need to look for gear with a core attribute of skill tier. Six pieces of gear, with each available to add one skill tier to your power level, and each of these tiers unlock more and more powerful versions of your selected skills. Agents should also expect an overcharge effect, pushing their skill effect levels to uncharted territories for short periods of time. Certain weapon talents or exotics have been identified as being able to contribute towards your agent reaching the overcharge effect, and the skill damage tree teased on stream showed an overcharge damage effect of plus 400%, which is crazy. So you want to tailor the difficulty of your Division open world experience? Well, with the introduction of global difficulty selection and directives, you will now have the ability to do so. Global difficulty, i.e. the difficulty of the NPCs you encounter in the open world outside of missions, can be modified and amped up from normal all the way up to heroic, and attempting the LZ on higher difficulty rewards you with more XP, which will also correlate to more XP for your season pass. Directives also returned from the original Division game and were a fan favorite of Update 1.3 and the Underground DLC, and these allow players to modify their open world experience even further. This set of directives can be toggled through and chosen to fully customize a player's PvE experience, and they range from Ammo Hoarders, which causes a player to lose any unused ammo if they reload with ammo still left in the current magazine, all the way up to a directive called No Regen that prohibits an agent's armor from regening and will require a manual heal to replenish. Gear 2.0 is at the heart of this update and this one topic alone could be made into its own 10 minute video. However, at its core, gear has been made simpler to understand with clear attributes including core and normal and a bevy of new gear talents which will be found on backpacks and chest pieces. A huge complaint of players over the first year of The Division 2 has been the inability to read and understand gear and weaponry, and grasp what is a desirable piece to keep and equip, or break down from materials, or even sell. Gear 2.0 makes it easier to see the differences with clear comparisons. 
the game will now literally alert a player as to if the selected gear is better than what they have equipped. And with the removal of the gear stat point cap, God rolls are now back in the game. God rolled gear pieces will be identified with a special loot plume and insignia above the gear and will make sure that players know that the piece of gear is desirable. Now with this new rollout on Gear 2.0, players will also be introduced to four new brand sets and two new gear sets, with the first of those being System Corruption, a gear set with bonuses designed towards PvP, and the second from the original Division game, the ever popular Strikers makes its return. Now both of these sets can be looted from anywhere in the open world or missions and provide agents with large bonuses, such as large amounts of armor on kill and damage stacks for landing shots on target. Any discussion concerning Title Update 8 and the Warlords of New York expansion would be incomplete if it did not include what is potentially its biggest addition, and that being the new Talent and Attribute Storage System. Players have long toiled against huge stashes completely overstocked with saved gear for one particular attribute role, and this new system will deliver agents from weekly stash space management purgatory. Attribute roles are clearly displayed, and if a player loots a piece of gear with a particular talent or high attribute role, they now have the option of permanently storing that portion of the gear into a permanent codex for future and unlimited uses. Find a better attribute role than what you currently have stored? Break down that gear and store the new attribute to overwrite the previous save stat, and you get the point. Now, unfortunately, there are two separate codexes, with one being for gear from the 1 to 30 rank ups and another separate library for level 31 to 40 gear. A clear breakdown for each gear piece and weapon archetype shows how many of the total available talents and attributes you have stored for each category and makes tracking and storage so much easier and more intuitive. And this will complete my 9 changes to look for in the Warlords of New York and Title Update 8. If you have not yet done so, I would greatly appreciate you smashing that sub button and click on the bell icon to receive all notifications for my YouTube channel. If you like the video, rank it with a thumbs up if not with a thumbs down. If you feel like supporting my YouTube content and operations, please look in the video description for links to do so via my Patreon page and Teespring merchandise store. If you haven't yet done so, follow me on Twitter for all my thoughts gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. Until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.